Well, hello, church. Um, just wanted to take a couple minutes and hopefully uh, encourage you with some thoughts from the scriptures. Um, as I've been uh, over the last couple of weeks, just preparing some of the material for um, the uh, the Trinity Kids uh, weekly emails that are going out. Um, we've been starting a new unit in the book of Judges, and so I've been um, diving back into that book a little bit and, and just wanted to share um, one of my favorite um little stories that's kind of in the background and if you don't know some of the uh some of the information you might uh some of the background information you might kind of just skip over it and and uh and miss it um but let me just share i'm going to read a couple verses here from judges chapter one uh starting in verse nine it says and afterward the men of judah went down to fight against the canaanites who lived in the hill country in the negeb and in the lowland and judah went against the canaanites who lived in hebron now the name of Hebron was formerly Kiriath Arba, and they def they defeated Sheshai and Ahiman and Talmai. And so, like I said, if you know if you're you'll if you're reading the book of Judges, you might just kind of pass over this, just uh, sort of you know like the the dry news report of okay, here's another uh, group of people that the Israelites have defeated while you know entering the Promised Land. Um, but these are not just any old Canaanites that Israel is defeating here. All right, these are giants. Hey, these are giants. And we know this because the name of the city, uh, the, you know, the, the former name of Hebron, the Canaanite name was Kiriath Arba, which means, Kiriath means city. Um, and Arba is the father of the Anakim. We're told in Joshua 14 that he's the father and the greatest man among the Anakim. And then not only that, but the, the three tribes that are mentioned, Sheshai and Ahiman and Talmai, um, all three of them, uh, are names of some of the descendants of Arba. So they themselves, uh, Anakim. And it's these Anakim who are the, the, the very reason. They're the ones that when the, the, the spies came into the land in Joshua um, to, to spy out the land, um, you know, 10 of the spies came back with their negative report. You know, we can't go into the land. It was because of these Anakim, these giant people that, you know, that terrified them so much that they, um, thought that they were unable to enter the land um, and, and, you know, subsequently were punished and had to wander the wilderness for, for 40 years because, because of that. But here in Judges, we find that none of the fear that, that sort of paralyzed that original group of spies and the original, you know, that older generation um, from entering the land, none of that fear stops Israel now. And so we're told that it's the tribe of Judah who actually goes up and defeats the city of Hebron. But more specifically, not just the tribe of Judah in general, but in, in Joshua 14, um, the same story that we get just a couple verses here in Judges is told in much greater detail. And we're told that it's actually Caleb who leads Israel uh, against the city of Hebron. And it's Caleb who takes the city. And so if you remember Caleb, one of my favorite characters in the Old Testament of um, Along with Joshua, he's, you know, remember there were 12 spies who entered the land and 10 of them come back with their negative report. Well, it's Caleb and Joshua who come back, you know, and say, yeah, there's giants. Yeah, there's fortified cities. Yes, there's, you know, this and that and the other thing. But, you know, we've got God with us. So, so who cares? Um, and so, you know, the people are punished. They have to wander the wilderness for 40 years. Joshua and Caleb are spared. Um, and are given a second chance to enter the land. And now, so after 40 years, Caleb is given uh, the opportunity to have his choice piece of real estate in the promised land. Um, and what does he pick? Well, it's Hebron. He wants Hebron. He wants the city of giants. So I want to read for you. This is one of my favorite speeches in all of scripture. Here is Caleb's request to Joshua, um, you know, telling him that this is, this is the part of the promised land that he wants. In uh, Joshua 14, starting in verse 6, it says, Then the people of Judah came to Joshua at Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, in Kadesh Barnea, concerning you and me. I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. But my brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Yet I wholly followed the Lord my God. 
And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land on which your foot has trodden shall be an inheritance for you and your children forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, just as he said these forty-five years since the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel walked in the wilderness. And now, behold, I am this day eighty-five years old. I am still as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. My strength now is as my strength was then, for war and for going and coming. So now give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke on that day. For you heard on that day how the Anakim were there with great fortified cities. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall drive them out just as the Lord said. Then Joshua blessed him and he gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, for an inheritance. Therefore, Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord, the God of Israel. Now the name of Hebron formerly was Kiriath Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim, and the land had rest from war. So, uh, Hebron was, um, when the people were going into the land, there were certain cities that were to be designated as sanctuary cities, and, and Hebron was one of these cities that was going to be a sanctuary city. And, and here, because of what Caleb did, the land, we're told, had rest from war. The principle being, if we want sanctuary, if we want peace and we want prosperity, then the giants need to be defeated. Right? The giants need to be removed from the land before we can have sanctuary. And it's safe to say that um, it's, it wasn't Caleb's, you know, as, as confident as Caleb is in his speech. It wasn't his physical prowess, you know, that this 85-year-old Caleb uh, was able to defeat a city full of giants. It was his faithfulness. It was his obedience. It was his confidence in the promises of God. And so it's at times like this when we are faced with difficult circumstances, right? The whole world is, you know, faced with this difficult circumstance that we often turn to scripture. And so what usually we're hoping to find is reassurance from God that there really aren't any giants. But God doesn't promise us that. God doesn't give us the promise of a giant free life. What he does promise is to be with us, just like he was with 85-year-old Caleb charging up the slopes of Hebron. Right? He gives us uh, uh, the, the assurance that he is uh, with us during those times, and then the assurance that he's already sent his son to live and to die for us, defeating death itself. Okay, so I hope uh, that uh, that encourages you, that you can, uh, that, you know, we can, we can rest assured that we, um, uh, have everything that we need to face the giants, to bring um, uh, sanctuary and peace and prosperity and rest to our land, um, as long as we are, like Caleb, faithful, obedient to the promises of God. Okay, God bless everyone. Thanks.